We're going to get to Peter Warner in just a moment, but let's go over the question we had this morning. This was an interesting study, uh, and I want to take you along the journey here with me to show you what we found out. So our question was from Adam uh, in Bettendorf asking, why have there been no EF5 tornadoes since 2013? He's right. We have not logged or observed a single EF5 tornado since May of 2013, and that was in Moore, Oklahoma, uh, a deadly tornado with, I believe, two dozen people that were killed in this, and we haven't seen anything like that since then. So take a look at the data, and here's the number of EF5 tornadoes going all the way back to the 1950s. And yes, we do have periods where we can go a couple of years or a few years without seeing these really strong monster tornadoes. But the thing that sticks out is look at how long of a period we're in right now. That is very unusual. In fact, I was looking at the statistical data and in any given year, based on our past history, there is a nearly 40% probability that somewhere in the United States each year is going to see an EF5 tornado. Again, the strongest tornado you can get. Notice that has not happened since 2013. And to have a probability that high means something is going on. Are we seeing a break from the stronger tornadoes? Are we seeing fewer stronger tornadoes? Or is something else going on when it comes to the data and how we are ranking? these tornadoes. So let me show you and, and re-explain how these tornadoes are ranked. We used to use a scale called the Fujita scale, known as the F scale, from zero to five. That was based purely on estimated wind speeds only. It really did not account for damage and the types of damage to different structures that was caused. As of 2007, we changed to the enhanced Fujita scale. That does now account for the amount of damage and what type of damage to different types of structures occur. So you can see if you go by wind scale alone, just the wind speeds, there's a big difference. It's almost like the threshold was kind of lowered for the enhanced Fujita scale. So you're looking at that and saying, well, wouldn't there be more EF5 tornadoes? And there isn't because the damage assessment that now goes on with this enhanced Fujita scale is a lot more strict and it's a lot more picky. It's much, much harder for a tornado to achieve that F5, that EF5 status because of our new criteria that we're using. And that's what's kind of made this drought kind of a bit of a headliner because you go back and you say, well, what if we didn't change the scale and we kept it the same and we kept estimating these higher wind speeds? Would we technically not be in an F5 or EF5 tornado drought? And the answer is yes. If we were to account for the system as it was previously, between 2013 and now, we would add a dozen, roughly, EF5 tornadoes to the list of tornadoes that have already occurred in the past. So when it comes to you know, the data and the continuancy of the data, it's definitely a problem, that is for sure. If you look at the key points of this study uh, that we found, here's a good example. So the EF drought is not likely due to weaker tornadoes, but it's the stricter application of the EF scale since 2007. For example, the F scale, if you have a well-built home that was swept away completely, nothing left but the foundation, obviously that's an F5 tornado, no question about it. However, with this new EF scale, the same level of destruction is now often classified as an EF4 because the wind speed threshold has changed and so has the, uh, the way that we've measured those winds. There's a lot, a lot of debate on this in the weather community, um, especially among the chasers, the storm chasers. There's a lot of folks that believe, you know, we've had a lot more EF5 based on damage that they've seen and wind speeds that have been estimated by Doppler radar, whether it's stationary or the Doppler on wheels. Some of those pieces of technology have certainly measured some very, very strong winds that if you base it on winds alone, would absolutely be an EF5 tornado. So here's your key points. And again, fascinating study. I want you to read more about this later today at WQAD.com WQAD when I get it up there. You've got the scale discrepancy. You've got this F scale and the EF scale, which represent the different kinds of wind speeds and damage. There's some that say we need to adjust the lower bound speed from 201 miles per hour to 190 miles per hour to better align with the historical data. And then also don't forget that that EF5 rating that was assigned based on damage to single family homes without specifying construction standards. Each home is built differently depending on the decade in which it was built. 
We remember that our building codes and our building structure and building technology is constantly changing. And that is what the EF scale was attempting to keep up with, but it looks like some further investigation may be needed. In fact, I did read not that long ago that there is more work being done on the EF scale. It's not perfect. It's certainly better than what we had before, but it does appear that more work is definitely done. So that was a fabulous question. Thank you, Adam, for sending that in. And of course, I'll have more about that on WQAD.com.